Good evening, everyone. Once again, I'm Bill Conkle, Park Planner with the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, we're probably going to get started. It's about 7.02, 7.03, and I think you can certainly join us uh, as the meeting goes along. Uh, on behalf of our director, Clyde Chrisman, and the staff of the Department of Conservation and Recreation, I welcome you to the virtual public meeting to discuss the update to the Twin Lakes State Park Master Plan. In the past, we have held these meetings in Cedar Crest Conference Center, but tonight we're playing it safe and bringing the meeting to you at your home or office. We thank you for taking time for your If everybody would uh, mute their mics, that would be helpful if you haven't done that already. Thanks, we just got a little bit of feedback. So I would like to thank fellow DCR staff members at the Division of State Parks, Natural Heritage, and my fellow staff members in the Division of Planning and Recreation Resources for their help in updating this park master plan. But also like to thank the staff of the DCR Marketing and Public Communications Office for their assistance in promoting this event and help in finalizing this public presentation. Next slide, please. So tonight we have three presenters. Uh, Dr. Melissa Baker, uh, okay. State Parks Director, will review the history of our Virginia State Parks, as well as the just... programs and facilities that we offer. Next, Kevin Fabian, Park Manager at Twin Lakes State Park, will give an introduction and overview of Twin Lakes State Park. Next, I will overview the master plan map and discuss the phase development plan for the park with you. The phase development plan is a list of proposed projects over the next 30 years. The map and phase development plan were sent to you in your meeting confirmation. Finally, we will be accepting public comments from you via the chat box. Public comment and questions are welcomed throughout the meeting on the chat box. Thanks to Kevin McClary, Director of the Division of Planning and Recreation Resources, for monitoring the chat box this evening. Next slide, please. So asking me this time, I'd like you to please mute your phone or your mic. Uh, that'll uh, help us to avoid too much interference. Remember that all comments and questions are accepted in the chat box. These will be recorded and responses will be made prior to May 29th, 2021. And this presentation will be available online following the meeting. Just remember the chat box is available all through the meeting, so you don't need to wait till the very end to make your comment if you'd like to. And at the bottom of this page is my address and contact information. Uh, this will pop up again later on, so if you don't get to write it down now, you can certainly write it down in a few minutes. Next, please. The purpose of this meeting is to present the park master plan and facility phasing. Public input is encouraged regarding recommended park amenities. Attendees will have the opportunity to provide input with regard to priorities for facilities and outdoor recreation opportunities. Public input is required by the law when we update master plans. So you're helping us tonight to fulfill that requirement. Thank you. Next slide, please. I am pleased to introduce the director of Virginia State Parks, Dr. Melissa Baker. She is the eighth State Parks director in our 85 year history. She has experience in state parks from Wisconsin, Montana, and most recently as a director of North Dakota Parks and Recreation Department. She earned her master's degree in outdoor recreation management from Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, and a doctorate in forestry outdoor recreation management and protected area planning from the University of Montana in Missoula. I present to you, Dr. Melissa Baker. Thank you, Bill, and welcome everyone. Thank you for making time to spend with us this evening. I'll be talking to you a bit this evening about 
an overview of the state park system. And then later, Kevin will talk to us more about um, Twin Lakes State Park specifically. Virginia State Parks are part of the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation. And as part of the department, we serve as part of the mission of the agency, which is to conserve, protect, enhance, and advocate wise use of the Commonwealth's unique natural, historical, recreational, scenic, and cultural resources. And within that mission lies the state park mission, which is to conserve the natural, scenic, historic, and cultural resources of the Commonwealth and to provide recreational and educational opportunities consistent with the good stewardship of these lands, waters, and facilities that leave them unimpaired for future generations. And it's these two missions that drive the work that we do in Virginia State Park and that provide the foundation upon which the master plan for Twin Lakes State Park is built. Next slide, please. There are three distinct phases of development within the Virginia State Park System, beginning with the first six parks um, that were developed in the system in 1936. So in 1936, Virginia opens a system of six state parks. Most of these parks were a combination of donated land plus state funds for development. And these parks were developed as part of Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, putting young men to work on conservation and natural resource projects across the nation. Uh, many of you have heard of the, Cecilia, the Civilian Conservation Corps, and if you look through especially the original six parks within the Virginia State Park System, you will still find evidence of their work. And these parks were First Landing, Douthat, Stanton River, Westmoreland, Fairy Stone and Hungry Mother. Next slide, please. In the second phase of the, the development of the state park system, you'll see the system growing from 1940s through the 1980s. We had a steady procession of new parks and those parks were acquired through a combination of funds, um, donations, federal grant money, and state capital development are how we secured those lands and then also developed those parks. Next slide, please. In the third phase of the development of the state park system um, is the, the phase that we're currently in where voters support more growth and development of the state park system. So if you're on this call today, you likely are a supporter of Virginia state parks and a user of Virginia state parks. And from the 1990s through today, that has been a large part of the impetus of new state parks and development of state parks is the visitors and the constituents who support state parks. So in this phase, um, state parks have been funded primarily through bond referendums. Um, one was in 1992, another was in 2002. <laughs> And they funded more than $214 million um, of projects, including five new parks and land for six more, 31 natural areas, 296 building projects that included campgrounds, cabins, support facilities, all the things that you enjoy and use when you're in state parks and the facilities that support um, those visitor areas such as water treatment plants and and the infrastructure that supports our buildings. And we continue to acquire lands largely by no donation or discounted sales. And the challenge that we have is to find the development funds. So the funds to develop these parks and then also funds to manage and maintain the facilities once we have them. Next slide, please. So today's Virginia State Park System includes 40 parks and additional four parks that are under development. And within those parks and lands, we have over 75,000 acres. 34 sites are on the historic register. 
We have 662 miles of trails and 32 parks with overnight facilities, 11 day use parks, 29 visitor centers, 19 picnic shelters, 11 swim beaches, four swimming pools, two restaurants, and 19 snack bars. So quite a bit of development in the Virginia State Park system. Next slide, please. And in these parks and, and using the facilities that have been developed, um, each park has a unique set of facilities, activities, and services. And so if you have visited many state parks, you know that each one has their unique character and the unique um, facilities and services and activities that you can participate in in that park. Among these are a variety of day uses, including hiking, swimming, picnicking, boating, bicycling, horse riding, paddling, overnight facilities such as cabins and camping. And then we also have programming um, for education and interpretation. So programs that you can come out and take part in. And in addition, um, visitors to state parks can have conferences and use our meeting facilities. Um, so you can come to work and be with family, but you can also come and have meetings in, in state parks as well. Next slide, please. So the relevancy of state parks today um, in the 21st century and beyond, you know, in this past year, we've all seen the relevancy of parks. Parks are part of the community. Um, we have folks that highly engage with parks. We have friends groups and volunteerism, um, a lot of volunteers in parks and, and a lot of the work that we do, we wouldn't be able to do without volunteers. And those two groups are indicative of the type of commitment that folks have for parks. And parks also provide economic benefit um, to local communities um, in which the parks sit. Many of you may have heard of nature deficit disorder and the challenge of connecting, especially younger people to the outdoors. Um, and that is something that parks is um, uniquely situated to assist with is getting people connected to the outdoors. And while out there um, relieving the stresses of the day and having the ability to access affordable recreation opportunities. So the, the beauty of the state park system is that they belong to the citizens of the Commonwealth and we strive to have affordable recreation opportunities for um, the people of Virginia. But the need for parks today is greater than it's ever been. Um, we know we need places to reconnect with nature, to be with family and friends, and to reestablish personal well-being. And in the past 12 months, we've seen people increasingly depending upon parks for these things. Um, when everything else was closed, parks were open and many people and individuals and families were able to come out to parks this year um, to get some exercise, fresh air, sunshine, um, get a break from the stress of the day and just to reconnect with nature. Next slide, please. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Kevin Fabian. He is the new manager at Twin Lakes State Park. Kevin comes to us from his previous role as assistant manager at Pocahontas State Park. Kevin did great work at Pocahontas and we're expecting wonderful things from Kevin at Twin Lakes as well. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Kevin. Melissa, <clears throat> thank you very much for the introduction. And thank you all for joining us this evening uh, to learn a little bit more about Twin Lakes and the master plan process. Um, so Twin Lakes State Park um, is it's about an hour west of Richmond, um, very rich in history, uh, offers a lot of amenities. Um, it is in Green Bay, Virginia, and totals about 496 acres uh, nestled inside of Prince Edward Galleon State Forest, which is uh, 6,496 acres. Uh, to give you a little bit of history on the park, um, Prince Edward and Goodwin Lakes, uh, oh, excuse me, next slide, um, were uh, created by the African American Division of the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. Uh, next slide, please. In 1948, civil rights activist Masio Conrad Martin uh, won a lawsuit against the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia challenging failure to provide separate but equal facilities for blacks. 
Um, this led uh, the conversion of existing state recreation area into a Virginia State Park. Uh, next slide, please. This park was originally named Prince Edward State Park for Negroes. Uh, the park opened in 1950 as Virginia's eighth state park and its first accessible to people of color. In 1976, the park grew to include neighboring Goodwin Lake State Recreation Area and was renamed Prince Edward Goodwin Lake State Park. In 1986, the park was rebranded under a new, more succinct name, Twin Lakes State Park. Uh, next slide, please. Um, because of the effect of COVID-19 on our interpretive numbers, I've included two years of educational programming metrics here. Um, so uh, as an example of a normal year, in 2019, Twin Lakes hosted 423 educational programs, reaching 6,388 people. Um, and in 2020, we hosted 122 programs, reaching 940 people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the uh, park amenities include over six miles of hiking trails around two very scenic lakes, um, beach swimming, um, nine overnight historic and modern cabins, as well as one modern six bedroom lodge and uh, a campsite hosting 33, or I'm sorry, campground hosting 33 campsites. Uh, next slide, please. Pictured here is the park office and gift shop. Um, other amenities include two picnic areas with rentable shelters, as well as two boat ramps to ac access each of the park's two lakes. Uh, next slide. Uh, pictured here is the Cedar Crest Conference Center, popular with weddings, um, training conferences, and executive meetings. Um, and we also have a concession building and nature center called The Spot. Next slide, please. Uh, Full-time staff at Twin Lakes State Park includes me, the park manager, uh, the assistant park manager, the chief ranger of operations who handles day-to-day -day maintenance needs, uh, the chief ranger of visitor experience who's in charge of interpretive programming, the office manager, and the park ranger maintenance. Uh, of these three, of these positions, three of three of them are law enforcement. Next slide, please. Uh, Twin Lakes annual operating budget for this year was $460,872 uh, with annual ev revenues exceeding $381,000 um, and the estimated financial impact of Twin Lakes State Park on the area is approximately $4.7 million. Um, state parks do rely heavily on park generated revenues to support operations um, so it's uh, important that we maintain efficiency in these operations. Uh, next slide, please. And I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Bill Conkle um, to review the master plan process. Bill? Okay, thank you, Kevin, very much. Great job. Welcome to Twin Lakes. I know you're pretty new and took on this presentation. That's uh, wonderful. You did a great job. So this slide depicts the cover of the 2018 Virginia Outdoors Plan. The Outdoors Plan is the Commonwealth's plan for outdoor recreation and land conservation has been updated approximately every five years since 1965. The outdoor plan is required for Virginia to receive land and water conservation grant funding. And we are currently working on the 2023 Virginia Outdoors Plan and welcome your participation in that process. We have found out over the years that a lot of our state parks uh, showed their head first in this Virginia Outdoors Plan when localities or nonprofit groups put names and lands forward to potentially become a state park. So we're very proud of that history with the outdoors plan. It's put out every year by our planning and recreation division. Next slide, please. State park master planning is required by the code. For existing parks uh, with substantial land acquisitions prior to major uh, improvements, uh, they're required to have a master plan in place. So state park plans are also required to be updated every 10 years. And that's what we're doing today with the Twin Lakes State Park Master Plan. So what is a master plan? It's a guide for the development, utilization, and management of the park's natural, cultural, and historic resources. And it's developed in stages, most importantly, with public input, which is what we're seeking tonight. Next slide, please. 
this is a copy, and I understand you can't read it because uh, it's so small, but you will provide a copy of the map and the phase development plan in your uh, confirmation email. So everybody should have received that, uh, which will give you a better copy to look at and to peruse uh, later on. Uh, next slide, please. Looking at phase one, uh, and number one in phase one, and it's not listed right here, is to create an outdoor historical exhibit utilizing the large shelter at the original Prince Edward State Park. And so you might say, what is that going to be? Well, it's going to be an outdoor exhibit. Uh, right now, there is an indoor exhibit at the Cedar Crest Conference Center, but it doesn't get uh, viewed a lot because people have to get staff to go there, unlock the building, whatever. So this is an outdoor exhibit, uh, world-class exhibit. Uh, and it will help uh, tell the story of the role that Twin Lakes played in the Civil Rights Movement. But probably more importantly, it will tell the story of the people who built the park, worked at the park, fell in love at the park, and the people who built memories with their family at that park. And that story has to be told. So we're trying to do a good job of, of telling that story. Uh, next. Group and primitive camp, important for Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, as well as uh, church groups to come in and be able to have a place to camp. We want to renovate cabins, Martin Cottage, and the Hill Lodge. We want to construct two accessible cabins near the existing cabin complex. We need a new staff residence. And we want to convert a current staff residence into a rental cabin. There's a need to upgrade and expand the campground. And we need to upgrade and expand the beach area, adding play items and outdoor showers. We want to create trail connections to Highbridge State Park and the State Forest Trails. Uh, we think connectivity is very important. We think it's important that people don't have to get in their cars to get where they have to go. So these connections are very important to connect uh, Twin Lakes with other amenities. Perhaps the, the largest project we have in this plan is to construct an office, contact station, and visitor center with exhibits. Uh, this would be a focal point for the park, a place where visitors can come and get oriented to the region as well as to the park itself. We want to abandon the road over Goodwin Dam, creating the single access point for the park. So the reason we're doing this is that we're working to comply with dam safety regulations and also trying to help us better unite the park and provide a safer experience for our visitors. We also want to upgrade and expand boat launch areas with parking and erosion control. Uh, if you've been to Twin Lakes and walked around, you'll see that we do have some erosion problems and we're working hard to try to address those. And the master plan is one way to get funding to do that. Next slide, please. This is the blow up of the Godwin Lake side of the park. Uh, once again, still difficult to read, but we did send you a copy of this full map uh, to you earlier. So you should have a copy of that. If you don't, just let us know. We'll be happy to send you uh, the full copy of the, the master plan map. Next slide, please. In phase two, we want to provide additional bank fishing and a boathouse on Prince Edward Lake. We want to improve the picnic area, including erosion control and upgraded comfort stations. We want to renovate current housekeeping office as a cabin support facility. Uh, because we're building a new contact station office, we're going to demolish the current contact station and office. And this is also a, a fairly large project to build a shared use off road trail from day use area to overnight facilities. So once again, for the safety of our visitors, uh, we want to get them off the road and have a separate pathway for them to get throughout the park on bikes, uh, pushing strollers, walking. We also want to improve six miles of park trails, either through rerouting, uh, bridges, upgraded surfaces. We want to replace existing playground and add an accessible playground. 
And eventually in phase two, we want to build a new campground with 30 sites, including three camping cabins and multiple RV sites. And we want to build accessible fishing piers and pathways near the cabin area. Next slide, please. This is the blow up of the Prince Edward side of the park. Uh, just note that everything that's in red on these maps is uh, something that's proposed. Uh, not necessarily a brand new facility, it could be the renovation of a facility, but it does require uh, some funds uh, to get those things done. So everything in red is proposed, everything is in black uh, labels existing facilities. Next slide, please. Phase three. Want to retrofit the concession building into a discovery center and make sure we have a concession area that allows window sales for people to walk up. We feel like that's a good incentive for uh, making some additional concession funds. We want to upgrade day use parking, upgrade the amphitheater, build a new staff residence, and we want to demolish nine abandoned buildings all around Twin Lakes State Park. These are buildings that no longer serve a purpose and will just be better uh, environmentally uh, and aesthetically to remove these buildings. Next up, we have to renovate the Cedar Crest Conference Center for use as an event center. Uh, this means upgrading the facilities to meet current standards for uh, conference centers, for weddings, family reunions, uh, other events make it a, a, a world-class event. And then we want to uh, build a storage facility in the shop area. We're in need of storage. Next slide, please. So that kind of completes uh, the phasing and the maps, the park. So I wanted to cover the guidelines. What's how many? So we ask you to put your comment in the chat box uh, sometime during the meeting, and we'll stay around a while to uh, allow you to have time to put some comments in there. Just make sure you include your name and organization if you represent a group. State your comment and provide any facts that may support your position. And tonight, only public comments are accepted only in the chat box. Your comments will be recorded and response will be made within 30 days. If you are a member of the media and have a question or a comment, please stay after the public meeting and our public communication staff will assist you. Next slide, please. So comments will be accepted up to May 28th. Please send them to me. And I think is there another slide? I think this may be the last slide, is that correct? Next steps, thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take your comments over the next 30 days, and then we'll update the executive summary, phase development plan and map. We'll present that to the Board of Conservation and Recreation for recommended approval. And then we'll send the updated plan to the General Assembly for a 30-day review. Following that 30-day review, uh, we'll present it for adoption by Clyde Christman, the DCR director. And then we'll have an accepted master plan for Twin Lakes State Park. Next slide, please. Once again, thank you for coming. We appreciate you taking time to assist us, to give us your thoughts. And I would say have a safe ride home, but I think probably most of you are already home. So anyway, have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening. It's a beautiful night out there. So thank you very much.